I wanted to talk today about having emotional wealth and let's just hope and pray that I'm only going to have to record once. (laughs) So our inner human attributes can be thought of as bank accounts, right? At least for me, by having a mental representation, I can better understand what I have given, earned, paid, saved, taken, or lost. So, regarding emotional wealth, what it is, how it's beneficial, how to build it, and how to lose it. The emotionally wealthy have a disciplined approach to um, to their inner self-talk. That is um, the voice you may hear inside of your head, your conscience, uh, your intuition, etc. They don't allow ill or evil ideas to grow in their minds. Sometimes we have thoughts that interrupt us that are so shockingly (laughs) outlandishly negative that we wouldn't be able to say them out loud. We wouldn't be able to tell anyone. It's these kind of thoughts that the emotionally wealthy know how to defeat with a more sober and encouraging thought, right? I'm a fat ass is turned into, I'm about to be so fine when I drop these last 40 pounds right? That's a really basic example, but hear me out because honestly, I am a person who has been through, you know, years of therapy, counseling, and um, I definitely can relate to the process of going from toxic thoughts that can cost you your life and your health into having thoughts that contribute to happiness and abundance, right? So I want to just make it clear, I'm not speaking to you as someone over your head. I'm speaking to you as somebody who has, you know, made that journey to the other side, if you will. So when it comes to like positive self-talk, like you can practice this as you would a sport. Uh, When it comes to enhancing or inculcating, instilling self-esteem, Self-image psychology is one of the most important fields of study. I owe so much to the self-image psychology reading. I mean, I would devour these books when I was an undergrad, right? I um, I was um, I was a self-mutilator. I had something happen when I was eighteen that I felt incredibly guilty about. Um, only for the guy to recently call me and apologize for what he did. Anyhow, um. I would cut myself as punishment. So again, when I say, ah, I'm being very vulnerable here. Again, when I say that, like, I'm not speaking to you as one above. I'm speaking to you as someone who did the work to save uh, her own life. Okay. So without being too dogmatic, I'm not a Christian, but uh, I find ancient scriptures from all over the world to be very beneficial. That being said, Jeremiah 29, 11, very famous verse for anybody who's ever spent any time in church. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope, right? Uh, If you're looking at, what is this? I think it's that. So that was the New King James Version, but the NIV version uses the word plans and uh, exchanges the word thoughts for plans. So it sounds like, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So what makes, (laughs) what makes the word thoughts equivalent to the word plans? is because your your thinking is planning what you think is creating a plan whether you realize it or not if you are thinking meditating heavily on your demise you're planning your demise you're planning when you think 
So what are you really planning, right? So if this, you know, this this voice of God is saying, you know, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, uh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, you know, to give you a future and a hope, these are the thoughts that you should be thinking towards yourself, right? And I know, I don't know how many times I said God, but um, I actually prefer the word goddess. Um, I guess I'm a little different there, but my personal belief system, which doesn't have to be yours, is that God is ungendered, right? So no male, no female, just, right? So I figure if I can choose one, hey, I'm going to say goddess, since when I think of a creator unconditionally loving me, I think of what is the perfect form of a mother's love. So just if I slip up and say goddess or something, just I'm I'm not trying to call you to to the worship of some, you know, demonic deity. So that's all. uh, Just throw that out there. Okay. I just, I like to say goddess. (sighs) A person who is emotionally wealthy is fully aware of the power of their own thoughts so i'm gonna go on ahead and invite you to become aware of your own thoughts now at this moment in a nutshell if you think you can you probably can if you think you can't you most likely can't that's that's how it works right I could get into Hebrews 11, 1, which is probably uh, my, my favorite thing from the Bible. I, y'all hear me out. Um, I grew up in church. I was, you know, a super duper Bible study leader, just gung-ho concordance that I was going to marry a pastor. And I have a lot of uh, scripture in my memory. There's something called a memory verse. If you've ever, you know, been to the Church of God in Christ, uh, founded by Bishop Mason, then maybe you're familiar with that kind of training. But these things just kind of spill out of me, okay? So um, I'm very self-conscious about that because I don't ever want anybody to feel like I'm preaching to them, right? As a school teacher, I've been given to lecturing and I just don't want you, I want you to feel comfortable here, right? Non-judgmental, I'm not looking into your face, you're not looking into mine, it's just heart to heart, you know, my mouth to your ear and my own. Um, So if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you probably can. I'm saying probably because there are exceptions to this rule, but understand that it's still a rule and it's a rule for a reason. Your thoughts can heal your physical body or likewise make you sick in your physical body. Weight gain and cancer can be attributed to, in some cases, distress and anxiety. What is stress and anxiety besides brutal thoughts? Get into it. (laughs) Come on, somebody. You understand what I'm trying to say here. Learn a lesson from the poor thinking of your past. Bring to memory a time when your thinking got you into a job or relationship or situation that was beneath you, that didn't become you, that sullied you. Understand that this was a function of your inner thoughts in as much as it was a function of your outer circumstances. Learn from the thoughts that do not promote happiness or success. So instead of inviting you to create new thoughts, because I don't want you to create any new negative thoughts, right? But I'm just saying like, you can think of a time in the past where your thoughts brought you to your knees or into a situation, into a relationship, into a decision, into a job, into something that really wasn't for you. I mean, into suicidal ideation. I mean, that is the precursor for actual suicide attempts and suicide itself, right? Do you remember that? Do you remember going through that, something similar, the way that you were thinking? Know that that is power. And again, it's not just a thought, it's a plan. It's a plan. Your your thoughts are, 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 are you plotting or planning with, for, or against yourself? 
One thing that people with narcissistic personality disorder have to their emotional advantage (laughs) uh, from time to time is their sheer delusions of grandeur. These are high thoughts, right? Oftentimes, the narcissist can achieve what we feel bad people don't deserve because they believe they deserve it. <laughs> They're planning. Their thoughts are creating their future, right? Now, now temper, please. Temper what I'm saying with the fact that you should never, ever aspire to be like a person with a narcissistic personality disorder, okay? <laughs> but having inner thoughts that promote you to yourself is a winning strategy. And that's all I'm saying, right? Full stop. (laughs) That's where that begins and ends. Don't be an arc. You have to love yourself to have emotional wealth, right? You can be a good person. You can be good to other people. But in in order, a prerequisite of emotional wealth is uh, loving yourself. And what brought on this um, as a topic for me is obviously I am, I'm, I'm a highly sensitive person, right? I'm very much an empath and it's a cool word to say now, but I really resent the fact that people are not um, discussing how toxic of a person you can be because you're an empath. I mean, just an emotional rubbish bin of other people's feelings and emotions where you the the the, where you begin and where another person ends is unclear energetically and it's it's difficult people wear it as this badge like oh you know it's cool to be an empath now but i remember growing up we got told oh you're too sensitive you're so sensitive We are these finely tuned instruments with uh, amazing spiritual power, but you really pay a cost to be that kind of boss. And part of that is um, picking up on all sorts of negativity and experiencing it in your body as your own, right? So again, when I'm talking about thoughts, please also understand that as an empath, I've had to discipline myself. And I wouldn't say that I have just, you know, conquered or mastered, you know, all that it takes. Like, I'm still on this journey. Um, I'm just familiar with something that I hope helps a listener who may not be. Okay. So, being monetarily rich is a death wish via suicide if you do not also have wealth in emotional health, right? You need wealth in love, in service, in generosity, character, family, faith, in order for being monetarily rich to be the reward that you had hoped it would be. And you know this is true because I know that you've heard of all of the celebrities, all of the men of stock market millions committing suicide because they didn't have what must adorn what must adorn monetary wealth so that you can enjoy it i'm going to pause it here that uh good deeds make a good deposit into your into this intangible bank account of emotional wealth remember i was talking about this as you know accounts and how that really helps me personally to conceptualize um my relationship with my emotional health and wealth, what I have given, what I have taken, what I've invested, what I have saved, what I have lost, you know, bankruptcy, Lord, don't go bankrupt. So basically doing good deeds kind of purifies, um, well, it purifies the soul, the heart, the body, the mind, but also um, it contributes to emotional wealth. Whether you give back with your time uh, by sharing your talents, volunteering, donating to causes you care about, I mean, anything else, right? You'll, you're going to help yourself foster a cycle of happiness due to emotional wealth. 
You know, we as people were easier to be around and naturally more joyful, happy, exuberant when we take the time to intentionally engage in kindness. And of course, happy and healthy interpersonal relationships also contribute to emotional wealth. Abusive relationships, unsure friendships, frenemies, toxic co-workers, these are all debits from your account of emotional wealth. Again, I say don't go bankrupt. Oh, you can go plenty, <laughs> plenty broke at the wrong job, plenty broke in the wrong relationship. My life and the relationships that I have today is so night and day different from the life I had and the relationships that I had of, of yesteryear right? So much better, so much more improved. Faith. Let's talk faith. Faith is believing in something outside of yourself, right? You might believe in a God, an ancestor, a deity, all of the above. Believing in something outside of yourself can stabilize you when things are hard, It's amazing to watch, you know, mother so-and-so of such-and-such church experience a death in the family as opposed to, you know, atheist so-and-so who doesn't believe in anything. It's amazing to watch the two flex uh, emotionality and going through that process of grief and how they conceptualize and handle their grief. The one that has faith is not the same as the one who does not. Money and success only enhance your life, right? They don't make your life, but they enhance it. So an enhancement, I mean, think of like makeup, how it enhances your features, right? You can make those eyes you already have bigger. You can make those eyelashes you already have look longer. You can make that nose you have look leaner, slimmer, right? You can make those cheekbones stick out and look high, you know? You can have all manner of Dita Von Tees and Pat McGrath makeup, but you need a face to put it on, right? That's the real foundation, not the liquid or the pressed powder, but a canvas of clean and clear skin, which for which to apply these things to. So I guess I'm saying the same thing about um, emotional wealth. Emotional wealth is going to be that foundation that you can add your money and success to. Emotional wealth is like going to make money. Um, Emotional wealth is going to make money and success in your life what you'd always hope that they would be. There's a reason wealthy men whisk women away to exotic islands and sharing with them in luxury items and experiences that these women pay nothing for (laughs) because sharing with someone and giving to someone is part of emotional wealth. Giving, 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 okay? It's part of emotional wealth. Making the people you love happy to an extent is an investment in your emotional wealth, right? An investment that gives back increase. The really harsh, really sad truth about life is that happiness isn't promised. There's no guarantee. We have to strive for that. So if you are going to strive, one of the best ways that I can think of striving is considering your account, as it were, of emotional wealth. What's in that thing? (laughs) You got IOUs in that thing from the last person you played or from the last person you, you know, I don't know, played like a drum, like an instrument, you know, uh, played them like a piano, you cheated them out of their money or just cheated on them, period, or broke a heart or lied to somebody, finessed, finagled a human being, right? Treated someone unjustly, teamed up against an innocent person, you know, didn't stop to say or intervene and do the right thing. Like, yeah, 
all of that matters. <laughs> all of that matters. All of that can contribute to or corrode your humanity and your emotional wealth. It has an impact on you. What you do right and what you do wrong does have an impact on you. Who you are to yourself and to others. Be careful. One of the perks of being emotionally wealthy is that emotionally wealthy people are less needy, frigid, frantic. <laughs> uh, they're more easy to love, right? Easy to love, easy to miss. And um, I guess I'm going to wrap up by saying consider um, consider avoiding hypocrisy. No word has ever scared me more. I've had people who know who know I'm not a hypocrite who would just call me a hypocrite just because I know the word would freak me out as a teenager and in my early 20s. It just would, would knock me over, you know. Um, it's a very scary word. You can really eat yourself up from the inside out by being two different people. Consider your spiritual needs. Consider your faith. Consider what you believe in and what it looks like to live by your own convictions. Think about it. Some of the least stressed out people are people who live in alignment with their faith. And it doesn't mean be perfect, right? It doesn't mean don't make mistakes, it doesn't mean that every now and then, you know, you're not going to veer to the right or to the left. Like, yo, like, I've heard Christians and Muslims say we wouldn't have a forgiving God if there was nothing to forgive, right? But being true to your faith, your beliefs, is one of the best ways to contribute to your emotional wealth. As is kindness, as is charity, as is, you know, giving back, helping someone. Prayer. A prayer is a great way to contribute to your emotional wealth. And um, I haven't fasted since the month of Ramadan, but honestly, uh, fasting fasting can really contribute like I and I don't know how fasting does it <laughs> I don't know the math behind it I just know that it helps I remember um in studying the religion of Islam people would say you know fasting has been prescribed so that people learn self-restraint right that's an incredible contribution <laughs> To your emotional wealth. And if you don't think so, call to mind someone who cannot control themselves, who has no self-restraint, who can't bite their tongue, who can't stop their hands, their private parts, and, and see how they've ruined their life because of it. Because of one situation, how many people are in jail, incarcerated, their lives are just a mess because they had no self-restraint. I can think of a lot of the problems in my life, a lot of the problems that I've made for myself in, you know, social media was were because of a lack of self-restraint. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely time to uh, start fasting again. There's something that happens to your inner beauty when you can be hungry and go hungry in spite of the fact that you can feed yourself. There's just some kind of crazy math. I'm not going to pretend to know the inner esoteric Secrets of why that happens. If I knew, honey, I would tell you. <laughs> but it helps. So in the comment section below, I want to talk about emotional wealth with you. I want to talk about the things that you feel contribute to it. The things that you feel take away from it. The things that you feel contribute exponentially to the point where it is it is as if you've invested in some kind of a stock market <laughs> of emotional wealth. And now, you know, you've got all these wonderful added dividends to your account of emotional wealth. So let's start the discussion. Hopefully this wasn't too long of, of a video. Like, share, comment, dis uh, subscribe, and also go on ahead and check out the link on my website below. Uh, to this article it's similar and it has uh, some affirmations on it I'm a very strong believer in affirmations obviously because I talk so much about self-image psychology 
and self-talk, inner self-talk. And this is one of the best ways to get your subconscious mind to say the things that you needed to say to you. All right. Be cute. Be kind. (laughs) I'm uppity and I'm out of here.